All right, cool. So, um, all right, we're going to um, we're going to have a bit of a shortened session today. I have a, a family thing. We have a refrigerator being delivered that I have to go go deal with. We have we lost a refrigerator the other day, and it's been a little challenging here. So the the delivery guys are coming in in a little bit. Um, okay, what I want to do though today is um, get us started on a, a, a couple different things, or or, or or let's go on on a couple of things we're working on. Um, and then I'll have some additional lectures up later uh, for you guys so we can get back on content. But um, uh, two things we're going to go over. Uh, one, we're going to go over um, a new tool uh, for us to provide feedback to one another with Scalar. And we're going to talk about our uh, polls and, and things of that nature. So, um, so cool. So let's talk about that. So um, everybody okay? Everybody can hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, great. So I'm outside today because of the craziness inside the house. So there's uh, <laughs> hopefully everything's okay with light and everything. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let's let's uh, get going. Um, first, uh, well, actually, I'll let you guys pick. Do you want to talk about Scalar first or the poll first? You guys tell me. No vote. Scalar. Poll first. Ooh, split decision. I need some more votes here. I got two votes for poll, one for scalar. 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 Man, it's three to two. It's very close. Scalar. Scalar. Poll. Scalar. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do the poll. Okay, I think it's now exactly dead even. One of the next person votes, and we'll go with next person votes. Go. I'll get the poll. Poll. Okay, we'll do poll first. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> So democratic here. So democratic here. Okay, let's uh, let me let me get this um, let me get this shared. Okay, so you guys should all be able to see that now. Um, okay, so uh, we have another couple weeks left. Um, we're still going slow, so we need people to to throw some more uh, survey stuff out there. It's, it's getting better, but we, we still need to pick up the pace a bit. So you guys are doing a great job. We just need to keep it up. Um, and so I just want to give you guys an update, uh, not go over the whole poll. We don't, we don't really have uh, time for that. And also, we're still, we're very preliminary, but I just want to start to give you a flavor for the kind of stuff that we're beginning to see with the results that you all are pulling in. Uh, so again, this is very sloppy and just very quick. I just grabbed some of the data as of yesterday. There's about 160, 170, something like that responses um, so far. So again, our 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 ideal goal is to get around a thousand. So we're you know not not there yet, but we're on you know about 20% of the way, which is which is not horrible. So you guys are, are, I appreciate all the stuff you guys are doing, pushing it out. We got to keep pushing it out. But so this is just purely interim. So it'll be really interesting to see if, as we get more results, if these initial trends hold or if they're very different. Also, this is aggregate data. And you might be curious to look at people in different uh, counties or different age brackets or something like that. Um, so this is all just everybody together, uh, you know, boom, as, as a gross whole. First thing is, uh, as probably not surprising at all, it, it, people clearly have been driving differently than they otherwise would have. So in the past week, people were reported driving about 83 miles um, in, the, in the seven previous days, whereas they recorded if they didn't have any COVID, they would be driving more closer to about 200. And if there was no COVID or no natural disasters, maybe around uh, 150 or so miles uh, a week. Um, and I'm just going to run through these. So if you guys want to ask questions or make comments, just uh, unmute and, and chime in. Okay, uh, next is, uh, and so I'm, again, I'm only grabbing a couple examples here of some of our results, representative examples. Um, climate change, this is one we've been asking for, you know, 15 years. And uh, people always um, say that climate change, the vast majority of people always say that climate change is a major thing that they're worried about. <clears throat> 
Um, but in our poll, about 87, about 89 percent of the public says that it's a serious threat that we should be taking seriously and deal with. And only about um, 11 or so percent of the population thinks that uh, uh, it's not something worthy of that. Now, this could be that we're oversampling a certain groups. Again, because we're not doing the random encounter, uh, we probably have uh, less of a representative sample when we just pull the whole aggregate together. Could be that, or it could just be all the craziness with the wildfires and the hurricane season and all this and that. So this could um, both be a little bit aberrant or it could be uh, very real, um, time will tell. But I would say this is a bit higher. This is about 4% higher or so than we typically have gotten uh, in terms of uh, people. So we are you know, typically in the 80s, but we're more typically in the low 80%. So this is, this is interesting. Um, how about beach visitation? So this one's this one's interesting. So let's first look on the right column. This is uh, if there's n if we didn't have COVID, how frequently people respond going to the beach. It's a little bit funky because when we historically ask this question, we say in the past year how you know how how often you go to the beach. But because of COVID and people's changed behavior, recall that we asked that question this month and then compared to normal. So what I've done is I've merged some of the the category. So in the on this one here, these were the only options people had to choose from. Whereas with no COVID, they could choose monthly, less than monthly, a few times a year, et cetera. So I've merged those together to be a fair comparison here. So the people that would be going less than monthly seem to be going about the same, um, you know, pretty similar. But what we see is uh, with no COVID, there'd be a couple percentage more people going daily um, several percentage more people going um, uh, weekly, and uh, much less going monthly. So, the, so the it's it seems as if maybe people aren't not going to the beach at all, but just their frequency has changed somewhat, um, which is interesting. Um, do people agree with closures? Uh, two thirds of the public uh, felt that the closures of our beaches um, in the height of uh, COVID made sense. Uh, and uh, about 11% were not sure if it was good, not sure if it was bad. The rest of the folks thought it was a bad idea. So again, the vast majority of folks thought it was a, a reasonable thing to do given a global pandemic. Um, this is super complicated. Don't need to look at it. Just gonna uh, highlight a couple things here. So these are all, so so what, what influenced your going to the beach or the coast, right? Um, and again, the beach is sort of our proxy for the coast since it's, it's an easy thing to pick and it's uh, where everybody can easily identify. Um, and so we had all these various things that were possibly explaining what was going on. And, and of course, later on when we get our final results, you're more than welcome to look at any of these that you're curious about. Um, but I, I sort of bin them a bit. So these, these four seem to mostly be about COVID. These two seem to mostly be about the environment, et cetera. And so I've taken these percentages and I've summed them. So it looks like um, 40, about not quite half of the population um, were basing their, their decisions to go to the beach uh, on, on the climate associated with, the co with COVID, COVID-19. Uh, about a quarter of the population were making their decisions based on the environment, um, particularly in the, the dangerous environment, either from dangerous heat or, or wildfires, something of that nature. About 15% of the folks have some personal reason, um, mental health, physical health, et cetera, to, uh, to go to the beach or not go to the beach as it were. And then logistics. So things about how hard it is to get there, how much it costs, that type of stuff was about 11%. Um, people feeling unwelcome was around 5%. Um, and then other. So I, I didn't, I didn't, delve into the other but some of the other once we look at that maybe some of those would go into the personal or 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 COVID or something of that nature um how people are behaving differently um so it looks like uh the almost half the people so again this is this is the range that we asked you know major change or major addition some addition neutral reduction lots of reduction and so here are the results uh, right here in the middle, but then I've binned all the ones that were an increase and binned all the ones that were a decrease. So about half the population is um, consuming more plastic waste, they feel, uh, since the start of the pandemic. 
about a third of the population is doing what they would have done otherwise. And about a fifth of the population is, uh, is utilizing uh, less um, uh, uh, plastic uh, single use containers and utensils and things of that nature. Um, okay, let me move this, sorry, let me move this guy out because my display is a little hard to see right here. Okay, so then um, this is uh, how people's food consumption has changed. And I've highlighted the ones specifically related to us in the coastal zone. That being shellfish and, and finfish or fish fish. And so somewhat, I didn't think this would be the case, but um, um, so again, this is a quick and dirty graph. So this is, this is not uh, as, as clean as it, I could, but this is represented, this is stuff that you're consuming more. If it was right here on this axis right here, this would be no change at all. And if it was off to the left, that would be a decrease in, in consumption of that particular uh, item relative to your previous, relative to your, your um, background state or, or the non-COVID state. And so, uh, and so as the bar gets farther to the right, that says that people uh, were consuming more of that item. So shellfish was the greatest increase of any of these things, which is, which is crazy. So, so either people weren't eating any shellfish at all and started eating at least a little bit, or they were already eating some and they, you know, significantly increased their intake. Um, so uh, interesting. So uh, only soda, <laughs> soda and shell, shell, shellfish sort of run the, uh, run the tables. Uh, so if you wanted to go back and start a business six months ago, I guess you should be selling uh, shrimp Diet Coke or something to people. Um, uh, pork is also up. Fish is, is fairly high. And then we get this group of stuff that, that's increased, but you know, increased more or less similarly, which is all the vegan protein, soy and stuff of that nature, uh, alcohol, uh, coffee. And then we get into a little bit less increase in beef, a little bit less than that increase in chicken, and then into nuts and snacks. And these other things are, are, are pretty much uh, not much of a change at all. So consumption of water, consumption of fruit, people don't care about vegetables, or, or at least they're consuming the same amount of vegetables. Cool. Sorry, somebody had a question? No, okay. All right, how about, uh, how about of all these things we're, we're talking about, you know, with all the presidential election and all this craziness, uh, how hard are these things to change, at least in the, at least in the mind of the, the folks that are taking our survey? Um, and so again, on this scale, this, this axis right here is zero. So this would be, so, so, so to the left is, is uh, very difficult to change. To the right of this axis, here would be relatively easy to change. None of our results came out as being easy, which is, seems to make sense because we picked things that were a, a challenging problem in the first place. Um, so so over, of, the, of the problems that we listed, overfishing seemed to be the, the simplest one to solve, at least in, in the public's perception. Um, coastal development, very similar to that level. And okay, sorry. So this is my quick and dirty way to try to tell you guys. So the blue, is our, our, our coastal, specifically coastal zone things. While microplastics isn't exactly coastal zone, almost all the news items really tend to focus on coastal water and critters and stuff. So I, I go ahead, I went ahead and binned microplastic pollution as a coastal thing. The, the beige here um, are uh, environmental issues, but stuff that is either terrestrial based or universal. And so the aging electrical grid, you know, obviously more terrestrial, Sierra Nevada, the management of our Sierra Nevada forests, obviously there. Climate change, obviously that has a marine component, but also a terrestrial component, an atmospheric component, all that stuff. So that, that's how I bin that. Uh, then the pink or the, sorry, the, uh, the purple are ones that are just, um, uh, uh, you know, general human problems, basically. Uh, and then uh, I, I, set aside COVID-19 just because that is such a, um, you know, immediate thing that's just reared up. Uh, it, it could have been binned with the other human problems, but I, I coded it differently. And then importantly, this red one, this red one is a fake thing. So this is one of our red herrings. So th there is no such thing as a cholesterol, whatever I, whatever we 
put on there for the text. So this is useful because this helps us estimate error. <clears throat> More on that later, but, but basically uh, overfishing coastal development, not that much of a problem. Uh, uh, aging electrical grid and the proliferation of <laughs> nuclear weapons is, is about the same level of difficulty of Sierra Nevada forests. Ouch, that's, uh, I, I, that's an interesting one. Um, also very similar to um, uh, the problem of your privacy being collected by companies and stuff. I, I think it's fair to say that I, I think dealing with that is a lot easier than dealing with nuclear proliferation. Um, I, um, but whatever, that's how people perceive it. <clears throat> COVID, dealing with COVID, again, is, is more challenging than all these things we've just mentioned, according to the general public. <clears throat> but more challenging than COVID would be dealing with climate change, sea level rise, which is one, you know, one specific aspect of climate change. But you know, uh, not surprising, those things have come out very similar on the um, on the assessment uh, uh, valuation. Uh, dealing with institutionalized racism, dealing with homelessness and how and problems with housing, microplastics, microplastics, you know, more challenging or on par with institutionalized racism, which. Um, interesting. I, I would not have put it like that. Um, and, and the biggest one of all, the biggest problem of all is, is the, how politicized we are and how polarized we are in our society. Um, so uh, interesting, interesting. Um, but that, that's where we are with where, with where our coastal management problems seem to fall in the list of, of societal problems that we um, should be dealing with. Any thoughts on that so far or any of the things I've said so far, you guys? No, okay. Um, okay, so then uh, I just wanted to uh, show you guys where we are in terms of where the feedback is coming from in the US. We have a few surveys from outside the US, which is cool and they're, they're great, but you know we won't get that many. So I've just ignored those for the sake of this uh, presentation. Uh, this brief summary. So most of our response are from California, which is great. It'd be great to get some more coastal states to see how things compare. But, but again, our focus is California, so that's so that's cool. Um, so we're doing a good job there in terms of targeting our our stuff to uh, California, or targeting um, um, our groups or whatever to California. But if we look at where we're hitting in California, uh, uh, we're we're doing a great job sampling LA County, which is awesome. We should keep that up. Um, not doing a super great job at Vent in Ventura County in Santa Barbara. And recall, those are our three traditional places where we've been doing the survey for the last 15 years. Um, don't have any responses. Well, let me say this. This is, this is uh, I'm using for here where people report their, their home zip code. So that's how I'm, I'm figuring out where people are here. So we definitely have people that responded to the survey that just didn't, didn't want to tell us their zip code, which is totally fine, right? Even though it is anonymous, that, that's, that's acceptable. Um, so this is only for people that did identify where they were um, residing. Uh, so given that, nobody has claimed or reported that they are um, residing in Santa Barbara. And so we do need to do a better job of hitting those. In fact, we should really try to hit much more of, you know, coastal California and inland California to really get a, an, an interesting um, take on what's going on. Doing a decent job of Kern County right here, just inland from us, which is cool. Um, but that's really the only um, non-coastal county that we, we have anything um, decent. Got a few in San Diego, which is great. Need some more there, need some more in Orange County, need some more in Santa Barbara, uh, 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 San Luis Obispo and Monterey, etc. So, so that's where our distribution is as of uh, mid-October. And so what we're going to do uh, uh, for this week is want to make sure that we keep um, reposting them. So, so the repost you guys did last week um, really spiked up our, our result, results. So that's great. Um, obviously, we don't want to probably post every single day because that'll maybe get people thinking that this is you're a bot or or this is annoying or whatever but you know once a week or so seems to be about right and that seems to get our get our numbers up so i get i'd ask you guys to um uh, please repost to the places you've already posted to those social media spots or or groups or what have you um and then 
I want you guys to pick up some new targets. And so I have, so the, there's a link here. I have two links. I'll put it in the chat in a second. Um, but uh, one is going to be Ventura in Santa Barbara County. So, so some places specifically in those areas, uh, you know, love you to post everywhere, but since we're light on those two areas where we historically have sampled well, want to make sure we're getting um, residents from those communities. And then um, some other additional targets uh, in other California counties. For these other ones, um, at this point, not going to pick any specific number, uh, or excuse me, not, not going to say you have to specific, pick a specific county, but it'd be great to just pick some random, um, you know, different counties. Uh, and, and, and hopefully, if a few of us pick this county, a few of us pick that county, et cetera, we'll be able to hit better um, uh, across California. Let me, let me share this with you. Ooh, got some feedback from somebody. Um, so yeah, so great. You guys are talking about um, California counties. Cool. Uh, let me. Um, or sorry, what was the question? Uh, then oh, okay, so yeah, the dark, the darkest blue one was LA County. Um, yeah, cool. Um, let me show you guys where we are with that. Okay, so this is the this is the. If you guys click that link, you'll get to this this uh, spot. And this was just a modified version of our previous survey distribution um, uh, data sheet. The previous version was right here where you guys identified, hey, I'm gonna hit the Kiwanis or I'm gonna hit next door or whatever, which is great. I've added in just for reference, uh, since you, I, 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 I apparently predicted what you guys were thinking about, what, what uh, whoever was asking about, a grant or whoever was, was thinking about. So here are all of our California counties right here, and you guys can see this, right? You guys are okay with seeing my screen? Yeah. Okay, okay so here, you want me to make it bigger? Um, gosh, all these Zoom things always get in my way. Let me... Is that, that a little easier to see? Um, so here, I did, I did, all I've done is listed our counties, the, the counties in California listed their population as of 2019. Um, we could have a whole conversation about the census, but let's not. Um, but basically this is just a, a relative measure of if are, there big, are they big or are they small type of thing. Uh, and then as of the 18th of people that had identified their um, zip code and they report, responded from a California county, um, this is what I've, this is what I've, uh, uh, put it in here. So you can see that uh, LA, we have 31 people from LA and, and uh, et cetera. Five from Humboldt, five from Kern County, et cetera. So we want to get these other counties, you know, outside of uh, our, the more the better. But ideally, we'd have most of our surveys coming from our historic hotspots, but then have something like 10, 15 people from each of the other counties across California. That'd be sweet. That would be a, an aggregate, that'd be a nice uh, a sampling across inland and coastal California. So that just gives you a sense. So if you're trying to figure out, I don't know, where should I, where should I target? Go ahead and look at this, this tab here that says California counties targets and, and just to get a sense. Okay, but then what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna go jump over to this one, which it says today's date, October 19th. And this is um, uh, for, for, you know, for today. So I have this, I have this assignment is due tomorrow. Um, but uh, uh, if you guys can do it today, that'd be great. Um, and so uh, again, where, where might you target? Uh, what group might you target for either emailing or you know, outreach or social media posting to their group or whatever? So what that group is and then you know, the, the website or whatever. And so what, I, what I'm asking you guys here is to pick three things that, you, that would target. And again, these don't have to be exclusively these um, Santa Barbara, but at least there, there should be some representation in Santa Barbara. So you could have a decent confidence that if anybody responded, there's a decent chance that they would be in Santa Barbara. So uh, Santa Barbara County, three. So I asked everybody to pick three more targets from Santa Barbara County, three more from Ventura County. And then I just have a list of uh, 10 that could be from any county. 
And so if you guys do go in, or when you do go in and type these in, if you could just change this to whatever the county is you end up uh, targeting, um, that'd be great. Uh, so that will help us continue to get our push going. So not sure if we're gonna make our thousand target. Uh, we're, we're sort of behind the ball a little bit in terms of what the typical or in the past, what some of our uh, data accumulation rates are, but that's okay. You know, if we could get around 500, 600, that would still be a, a, a great job in the craziness of COVID. So if we could, you know, three, four times the number of people um, that we have so far, that would be great. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's our um, additional targets and that's the quick little um, update on our opinion polls. Questions? No. Okay, let me, um, let me. Pause my thing here. Ah, there we go. Okay. I'm going to stop that one.